So we're going to talk a little bit about the pinhole uh, camera and how the pinhole camera works today. So I'm, I'm first looking at just the basics of a lens and how we deal with lenses and we get an image. So here we have our tree. Tree is going to go with some light off of it. So if we look at this, we're going to take a ray of light. And again, the rays of light are always going to be the ones that are going to go in parallel first and then it's going to go through a focal point. So we have probably some kind of a focal point or focal length for this this uh, lens here. So there's my F and I'm going to see that it's going to refract and bend through there. So we know that that's the way that the light's going to pass. We would also take another beam of light and pass it through. So this is a double convex lens. So there's probably another focal point over on this side. So we got our other F on this side where we'd pass it through here. Okay. Oops. And then it would bend and go back this way. And then of course there's always that one ray that we saw in the video, the ray that goes directly through the center and would also converge. So in other words, we get all of the convergence at one point. And so this is going to give us where our tree is. So we'd see like this is the top of the tree. Okay, here's the trunk. Okay, and there's our leaves in there. So in other words, our tree now is upside down and we see that image being formed. So that's our ray diagram that shows what's going on. And we we're gonna talk about how does this work if we were using, say, our eye. So like our physical eye actually is similar in the sense that our eyeball would be set up like this. We have a lens that's in here as well. So in other words, that's the same lens that we're looking at and we're forming our image inside on our retina. So this would be our screen or our retina where we'd be converging all of our all of our um, images on. So that's our how our eye works. Well, sometimes in our eye, we actually have the ability to change our lens a little bit or change how much light passes into our lens. So like if it's really bright out or if it's really dark out, we uh, our pupils dilate and that's really because the iris of our eye is going to change how much light we let pass in. So in other words, the iris might close down the amount of light or open it up. This is the same for a camera. So in a camera, it's called an aperture. So the camera actually will change how much light can go in. Um, in our pinhole cameras, we're using now a box. So here's our can that we're gonna be using. And we're going to only let a very small amount of light come in. So in other words, we have just a very small opening. So that's our pin opening. And if we look at what's going on here, we're going to have our tree out here. So I'm going to put a tree here. Okay. And we know that from the tree's point of view, we've got all kinds of light that's going in. So in other words, there from this point right here on the tree, there would be a ray of light that could go this way, but it can't get into the can. And there'd be a ray of light that could go here, could go here, could go here, and this is where we'd get one that would go in. And then there's ones that could go here and go here. So in other words, only really by using a small opening, we're only allowing one ray of light to kind of get in, and that'd be this one that makes it into the can. And the same would be true for things like at the bottom. So at the bottom of the tree, we'd have rays of light that would be trying to go in, but there would be that one ray of light that would go through. And so if you look at how this works, we're getting one individual ray of light that's kind of going through and crossing. So everything would have one ray of light from this tree that would go through the can and it would essentially cross. So what was on the top would become the bottom, what was on the bottom would become the top. And so we'd see our tree form so that here's our trunk, okay, and here's our tree inside. So in other words, we would see this do a flip. And so there would be our flip of our image, and these would be our real rays of light that would be crossing. So that's how we kind of form that image inside of our pinhole camera. Now, the light quality matters. So like if we think about how light is working, all of the rays of light have to reflect. So in other words, the sunlight is coming in and it's reflecting off of this surface and that's what's making these light rays reflect. Well, if we 
um, have a low quality light, okay? Low quality light is going to take longer for the light to reflect to form the image. So in other words, we adjust our shutter speeds based on that. And we can also adjust another thing in cameras, and this is kind of an interesting thing, is depth of field. So if we look at how depth of field works, we're actually um, going to see like the light source coming off of here bouncing, but if we had another object out here, so maybe we've got a little bit of a, a fence line or something that we're going to have, the light here would actually have to travel farther. So if we think about it, that same ray of light that's going in here, we'd have to have a ray of light that would be going from here in, and because the distance here is greater, we're gonna see that it's going to be less likely to make a clear image in the amount of time that it takes for this one to make a clear image. So this is what we call depth of field. And it makes for kind of a hazy stuff out here, but crisp and clear here. And I'll show a picture of that to give you you an idea of what depth of field looks like as well. All right, this is our uh, pinhole camera setup for developing. Um, we're going to have some solutions that we're going to use, and here's our camera. Um, first of all, when we look at the camera, you can see it's nothing more than just a can. Um, it's the inside of the can that kind of matters. We did paint the inside black. We don't want any light to be reflective inside there. So that's why we want to have a, a surface that will absorb light. And we know that black will absorb most of the light rays that'll come in. We're using a small little pinhole that you can see right here that's on here. So in other words, when uh, the camera's sitting down, light will enter into here and it'll then come into the photo paper that'll be on the back side, and all other light should be absorbed. So we load in photo paper into the camera. We have to do that in the dark because the photo paper itself is sensitive. We'll then seal this shut. We'll wrap a little bit of electrical tape around this just to seal this off, and then we're ready to go take some pictures. So we're gonna do that in the dark. Um, and when we're done uh, with that, we'll bring it back in here and we're going to run it through three different chemicals. So in the first tray will be our developing solution. Our second tray will be a um, stop solution that stops the development from happening. And then the third tray is a fixed solution. So we have to go into one solution, into the next solution, and then into the third solution. Then we rinse it off. Again, all of this has to happen in the dark. Uh, we get to work under the uh, red lights. Um, red, of course, doesn't have as much energy, so it's not going to impact the, uh, the uh, film paper um, like it would if it was regular light. So that's our, our goals with this. And I'll try to do one in the dark to add to this. All right, we're back in here. I've got my camera all loaded up, and we're going to try, and try to take a picture here. Um, so I'm going to take and make sure that the whole of the camera is going to be pointed at where I want the image to be. So we're going to have that sitting right there. I'm going to make sure that we then open our camera lens. Okay, the uh, hole on the camera is there open. And then I'm going to make sure, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a self-portrait so i'm going to sit here really still for about the next three minutes all right we're here in the dark room now uh, we've got our picture i'm just going to open up our can again and get our film paper back out so we gotta just get our camera open okay so there's our camera. We're going to find our film paper now. The paper itself, again, has kind of a glossy side and a non-glossy side. Okay, so we've got our film paper. This is the part that was exposed to the light. We're going to go into our developing solution. And we'll watch to see if we can watch the picture come into focus here a little bit. 
Okay, I'm starting to see some of the images. You can see the lights from the classroom starting to show up. Okay, I'll let this darken up a little bit. This is where we can control kind of how long we let this go for. Um, but we can definitely see that there's an image that's forming. And this is all from the light that was in, being reflected in the room. Okay. We did about a three minute exposure. All right, and looks like that's about as good as we're gonna get. This is where you could almost do a little bit of control of how much exposure you're gonna get based on the length of time that you leave it sit in a developing solution. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run it through the stop solution. So this is gonna stop our chemical process so that we get that chemical process to stop on the paper. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it into the fix. And the fix solution is now where the um, paper is going to be permanently set in that picture. And so we can go ahead at this point in time, we can turn, turn our lights on, we'll take a look at what we've got. Okay, so it looks like we've got our image here. Now remember that our image would have been upside down coming into the can, so everything would have been looking like this, and because the can is round a little bit, this is how the image was being formed inside of the can. But if we easily take this and flip this over, we're gonna see what we're gonna get here. And you can kind of see the image of me sitting there in the room, okay, and we've got everything kind of around, so there's some of the lights from up on top. If we curl it a little bit, it'll make more sense because the can itself was curled. If it had a flat camera, it would have worked out better. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on some water, give this a little bit of a rinse. Just to get all the excess chemicals off of it. Okay, I'm gonna set it here to kind of dry a little bit. Let's quick lay it out here just to take a look again at it. And so there's our picture.